Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Time for another blind reading. Yay! Woo-wee! Today we're going to be reading a story that I, uh... I mean, I think I've gotten a few requests for... Uh, but I've never actually read. And it's called one dollar dot wav, or is it wav? I don't know, I always say wav. Uh, it's a creepypasta story, of course. Uh, and it's kinda long, I suppose. Not too long, but kinda long. I'm looking at it right now, it's a little bit long. So we're gonna start right away. Uh, but before we begin, for those unfamiliar with what with uh, what uh, <laughs> blind creepypasta readings are, uh, basically and simply, it's more of a sort of laid back sort of video. It's a podcast sort of thing, where I basically read uh, creepypasta stories that I have not read before, and I offer my uh, genuine reaction. I offer my thoughts. I offer my criticism if I, if I have any. Sometimes I just scream at the stories because I don't like them. Or I do like them. Depends. So, here we go. Uh, there are nine posts in total for this uh, story. And we're gonna, of course, start with post three. Now we're gonna start with the one. <laughs> wow. So, there is a sound file here. Uh... I am going to listen to that right now, see what's up. I am gonna turn down my volume, just in case, because I seriously hate loud noises so much. Like, I think my ears are very sensitive to loud noises. So I'm gonna turn the volume down, but this is actually quite creepy, this uh, sound. I just feel like something's gonna happen real soon. And the anticipation is quite... The anticipation is what makes a lot of great horror. The anticipation for something to happen. Right now it's basically just... Sort of droning. Not a lot happening, but I mean it is building some atmosphere. How long is this thing? It's been going on for like... One minute and... 30 seconds or something at the moment. Yeah, don't really know what else to say at the moment. I mean, the sound is still going on and it's droning, it's very heavy. Base, I suppose. Uh, yeah, what else is there to say? I'm just listening to it. I don't know if it's entertaining. I, I do hope it's not too boring for y'all. <laughs> oh, oh god, it's... Uh, okay, I thought I was building up to something, but I guess not. Or, or is it? It's probably building up to something. Well, I must say that if, if it was the author of the story who made this in the beginning, then I must say, congratulations, you did, you did a fine job at this. Like, this sound is uh, quite... Uh, it builds an atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? And it is quite creepy, if I do say so myself. Very heavy on bass, I suppose. A 
it should be over pretty soon. Okay, I think it was roughly four minutes in length, and that ending, I was actually expecting something to happen, but it just stopped, I suppose. But that was, that was interesting, that was an interesting uh, suspense, suspension builder, I guess. Suspense build, I don't know. Let's just start with post one. The following was a blog post by John Goodman, who is currently in theaters. 10 Cloverfield Lane, go watch that movie. Oh, and I should probably mention that this is like the first part of a so-called Goodman saga. The Goodman saga on the Creepypasta wiki. I don't know, if I like this story, I might just read the next ones uh, for blind Creepypasta readings. We'll see. Uh, blog post by John Goodman, posted on the 17th of August 2011. Included with it was well, yeah, was a download link to $1.wav. The file in question has been converted to OGG format so that it may be, down, be uploaded to the wiki. Goodman mentioned in the post that he would be doing extensive research on the mystery, mysteries surrounding this file. If he reports anything back, it will be posted here. I should probably also mention if you haven't watched Blind Creepypasta readings before, I don't edit out when I screw up over lines, screw, screw over lines, uh, just so you know. After my computer got burned to a crisp in a lightning storm, I was left with, my only old, with only my old computer. Fortunately, I had everything from my destroyed computer already backed up on USB drives and CD-ROMs. My old computer was running Windows 98 and desperately needed an OS upgrade. It was time to search online for a new OS install disk that was at an affordable price. You might ask, why not just get a new computer? I would have, but because of the crappy economy, I didn't have the money to do so. So my, other, my only other option was to upgrade my old one. Anyways, I searched around eBay to see if anybody was selling a copy of Windows XP at an, afford at an affordable price. There was no way my computer would be able to handle Vista, Windows Vista, or 7, so I would just have to go with XP. Lo and behold, someone was selling a full Windows XP clean install disk for only $1.45. Nobody else was bidding on it, so I placed mine. Even after I had placed my bid, nobody else did. Needless to say, I won the disk, with nobody else to challenge me. A few days later, I received the disc in a, in a white envelope. I opened the envelope and, I pull and pulled out the disc. It seemed just like any other XP bootable disc. I turned on my old computer and popped it in, and installed Windows XP like one normally would. While I waited for it to install, I popped some popcorn, <laughs> took a dump, okay, and watched, watched some television, occasionally checking on the progress of the installation and responding to dialog boxes, entering the reg registration code, etc. Finally, it finished installing, and I could use the computer. Well, we're already starting off with a bit of a cliché. I mean, maybe this was one of the first stories to do, to do this, and if it, if, if it was, then I suppose it, it is excused. But, you know, buying weird stuff off of eBay has become quite the, uh, uh, the, uh, cliche in creepypastas lately. Uh, and I mean, this story is not the only one who has done it, of course, uh, but if it was one of the first ones to do it, uh, then I suppose it is excused, uh, or maybe maybe not even because if it was like one of the fir uh, if, if it was like the first one ever then I would understand but if it was like if it wasn't the first and it's just copying some other stories then I don't think it's I don't know let's continue but 
fucking eBay. eBay is the source of all evil, according to the Creepypasta wiki. Anyways. The first thing I did was transfer everything I had backed up from my, my destroyed computer to the old computer. CD after CD, USB drive after USB drive, and finally I got everything onto my computer the way I wanted it. I decided to randomly browse around the computer a little before I turned it off and get, re and get ready to go to bed. What? Before I turned it off and get ready to go to bed. I don't know, that sentence sounded a little bit weird. I don't know. This random browsing led me to the C uh, Windows slash media folder. Then I noticed a file in there called $1.wav. I'm gonna say WAV. I, I think I've always said WAV, so I'm gonna just say that. I didn't put the file on the computer, so I assumed it was installed along with all the other files in the, com in the folder. But I realized I didn't remember any such file ever being included with XP when I had had it in my on my destroyed computer before I upgraded it to Windows 7. Curious, I double-clicked the file to open it. It was a very peculiar file. All I heard when I opened it was some weird static noise, almost as if it was some extremely distorted song. The file was just four solid minutes of this weird sound. It kind of creeped me out. I mean, it was nighttime, with my sleeping dog being my only company, and I find a file on my computer that I never put there, and wasn't part of the original XP installation, and all it is, is four minutes of weird static noise. Furthermore, it's in a system folder. Thinking it might be a virus of some sort, I scanned the file. Behold, one Trojan came up. I had no clue where I would have gotten it from. I'd barely been on the internet at all since Windows XP was fully installed. Suddenly, I realized I'd seen a file with, the, with this same name flash for a split second on the screen as the disk uh, installed all of the system files. I could only come to one conclusion. The disk had been tampered with. I decided to delete the Trojan... Tro how do you... I forgot how you pronounce it. Is it Trojan? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Trojan. Delete one dollar that I dot wav and do a full system scan with both of my antivirus programs, Malwarebytes, anti-malware, and and Microsoft Security Essentials. <clears throat> should uh, get should have gotten Norton. Norton that would have been a good one, I guess. Maybe not. I don't know. It was going to take a crap load of time to finish scanning, so I decided to go to bed while I while I waited. I still felt a bit mad that I'd went through all that time to finally get my computer set up and upgraded the way I wanted it, only to find the install disk had been tampered with. I woke up the next morning, ate my breakfast, took a shower, brushed my teeth, and went into my computer room. I sat down at my computer and turned on the monitor, which I had turned off the la last night before I went to sleep. I couldn't believe what I saw. My desktop background had been changed to a picture of a dollar bill. There were two errors saying that my two antiviruses had crashed, along with a bunch of other blank error dialogues that were all titled $1.wav, with a single OK button. Every icon on my desktop had been replaced with a shortcut to $1.wav, even the recycle bin. My start button now said $1.wav, and the usual flag icon was replaced with a dollar sign. When I clicked the start button, or in this case the $1.wav button, to bring up the $1.wav menu, every icon there was also replaced with $1.wav. How many times are you going to write w dot .wav or whatever? The administration administrator name was changed to $1.wav and the account picture was of a dollar bill. I clicked don't send report to both the errors saying malware malware bytes and Microsoft security essentials had crashed. I then clicked the okay button on each $1.wav error box. Okay, the screen was cleared of all those windows now. I tried to reopen my antivirus programs, but they both gave me a blank error titled $1.wav. I clicked OK on those. I went to the $1.wav menu and clicked shut down, but I just got a familiar clunk error sound. I tried the power button. Nothing happened. 
Finally, I just unplugged the computer and it finally shut off. I plugged it back in. I booted in safe mode and tried opening the antivirus programs there. But when I did, my computer made the weirdest noise ever and abruptly powered off. You're not gonna describe that sound uh, even more? That's quite vague. <laughs> I tried pressing the power button, but nothing happened. It didn't even, it didn't even whir up. That freaking virus had completely destroyed my only remaining computer. And I hadn't even gotten it, uh, gotten it from a website or anything. It had come with my operating system. Well, that was that. I had to get some things at the grocery store, so I left the house along with my dog. I have yet to earn enough money to buy myself a new computer. I do everything computer related on a friend's laptop that he generously lets me borrow when I need to check my email, do something on my bank account online, etc. I have used that same laptop to type up and publish this story on the internet, along with $1.WAV, which I have gone through and manually remo removed the malicious coding from. After a certain cryptic message I read talking about some last evidence that will have to be destroyed if I share it with anybody, which you will read about in just a moment, I have decided to research as thoroughly as I can about the mysterious $1.WAV, until I have figured out the sinister mystery that surrounds it. How do I get back $1.WAV after my computer was destroyed, you ask? Well, when I got home, my dog's ears perked up. As she and she began growling menacingly. She followed a scent into the computer room. Everything seemed normal. However, when I looked where my second com destroyed computer was, it wasn't there. Oh. Everything else was still there, but the computer was gone. I thought of a robbery, but who would want an old computer that doesn't even boot up anymore? I also noticed the tampered with XP install disk I had gotten off of eBay was missing as well. In its place was a different disc. It was a white CD-ROM with something written on it in green sharpie. I picked up the disc and read, This is the last remaining evidence that I know of. Keep it secret, or I'll have to destroy it too. I glanced down at the table the disc had been sitting on. Where it had been was a single dollar bill. It wasn't crinkled or damaged in any way, unlike most dollar bills. It was in absolute perfect com and it was it was in absolutely perfect condition as if it had been just made. I took a, I took the disk and the dollar over to my friend's house, the one that has the laptop that I'm typing these words on. I explained how both both my computers were destroyed and he agreed to let me borrow it whenever I needed to. So, I got on the laptop and put the CD in. On the CD was just one file. One dollar dot w a v. <coughs> well, that was po post one. I have oh god, I've been recording for eighteen minutes already. That's a lot. Well, I will have to say that it is interesting so far. I am liking it. Uh, interesting. I am noticing now that in the in post one, uh, the author wrote eBay with a. Uh, what is it called? A minus sign? I, I, I uh, can't remember what it's called when it's uh, used in text. But it was like an E, then a minus sign, and then bay. But in part, or in post 2, he just writes eBay as one whole word, which is how I usually do it. Uh, so that's weird. Maybe it's supposed to be like uh, he changed the way he, he uh, wrote stuff because it's supposed to be a blog, I suppose. Uh, so let's continue with post 2. On August 26, 2011, <clears throat> John Goodman made, made another blog post regarding his continuing research of $1.WAV. I think it's interesting that they haven't mentioned the fact that John Goodman in this story and has the same name as the actor. Like, I, you would think that he would, in the beginning of the story, go like, yeah, I have the same name as that actor, stuff like that. Hey everyone, it's me again. So you all remember that $1.WAV crap I posted about a week or so ago, right? Well, like I said I would, I did some research on it. Sorry, excuse me. Simply searching $1.WAV on Google yielded no results. I asked on a message board about the file, but nobody seemed to have even heard of it before. That is, 
until I got a reply from some guy saying he knew of the, ti of the file and had bad times with it. It went as follows. Oh, don't even remind me. One dollar that WAV. It's amazing how much trouble a four minute sound clip of heavily distorted music can cause. It was years ago. Some person on Craigslist was selling a computer with Windows XP already installed on it. Yeah, hey guys, you can't use Craigslist, or else, or else fucking robbers are gonna come and they're gonna try to murder you. At least if we're supposed to believe all the prank channels I've been watching recently. I'm just kidding. Fuck prank channels. Fuck the bad ones, at least. At the time, the we, the, I can't speak. Vista was still in, in beta and 7 didn't even exist yet. I went to her house in Cleveland to pick up the computer. I brought it home and turned it on. I noticed a, a wave file in the, in the C slash Windows slash media folder entitled $1.wav. Curious, I opened it and listened to it. It was nothing special, perhaps a little creepy, but it didn't interest me. I closed it and went to the bathroom. I came back to the computer and I could not believe what I saw. Everything was changed to dollars or some crap and a bunch of error messages titled $1.wav. I tried using my antivirus to fix what I instantly took as a virus, but it wouldn't open. I tried turning off the computer, but I, it wouldn't turn off, no matter what. The only thing that worked was unplugging it. I tried to boot in safe mode and use my antivirus there, but upon trying to open it my computer made this bizarre noise and shut off, and refused to turn back on. I didn't mean to I didn't mean refuse to boot into the OS. I mean literally just would not power up, power on, as if it wasn't plugged in. The next day my computer was gone, with just a single dollar bill in its place. I know it sounds insane, and you probably won't believe me unless you had a similar experience with the file yourself. Yes, that experience was very similar, in fact that was ex the exact same. So, I don't know. Cleveland. eBay had told me that the item location was Cleveland, Ohio. I now had a new mission. Track down the person that, was, that sold me the install disk. I replied to him... Wait, what? I replied to him. Uh, oh, wait, 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 sorry, I was mistaken. Don't worry about it. Because uh, it said her earlier in the story, but then I realized that it was uh, that when it said her, I was talking about the person who uh, had sold the disc and not the person who uh, had uh, sent the uh, message to the author. Whatever. I replied to him saying that I had indeed had a very similar experience and requested he give me the exact address of the woman that sold him the computer as I wanted to have a little talk with her. I probably sounded like a stalker, but I didn't really give a crap. I really needed to figure this out. Surprisingly, the user actually sent me the address the woman, uh, of the woman to me in a private me message. Living in Ohio myself, Cleveland was not too far away. So me and my dog got into the car and drove off. We arrived at a small yellow house that could only be the home of the woman who sold me the install disk. We walked up to the front door and rang the doorbell. A woman almost instantly answered the door. She seemed to be an elderly woman, short and stout, with white hair tied up in a bun. Then I looked into her eyes. Oh, those eyes. They seeped through me and into my soul, hungrily ex examining it, seeing if it was suitable to feast upon. I almost, I almost sprinted back to my car and drove off right then and there, but I couldn't. I had a mystery to solve. Why, hello, John Goodman, said the woman in a menacing voice that sent shivers down my spine. My first thought, oh dear, she knows my name. He knows my name. Radioactive man, oh wait, what was that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Jingle all the way, whatever, whatever. What was the name of the superhero in that movie? I, I don't remember. Oh god, please help me. My dog growled threateningly at the woman. It took all of my courage to finally sputter out. Look, I don't have time for fooling around. What is this one dollar dot wave and why did you put it in my Windows XP install disk? 
<clears throat> Let me just do my best woman voice, because that first uh, outing was not very good. Oh, I can't tell you that! Cackled the woman, whom I was now certain was no good. R now you were certain? She knew your name. That's That's quite scary. Why not? I countered angrily. Because, said the evil woman. Okay, I'm not going to do that. That ruins the atmosphere. However, I can't tell you this. Be very in the days that follow, for one dollar will haunt until all is hollow. And before I could say another word, the woman shut the door on me, cackling wickedly. I had no other, no other choice but to walk back to the car. Along the way, a man came by and asked me, What were you doing over there? I was, talking to, I was talking to the woman that lives in that house over there, I replied. The man's expression... Oh, shit. The man's expression became concerned. Nobody has lived in that house for over ten years. Huh. I looked at the house, but instead of seeing the bright... Instead of the bright yellow cherry house that I had seen when I arrived there, there was a crumbling abandoned foundation with a wooden plank nailed to the front door saying, Condemned, in green letters. But, but I was just talking to an elderly woman that lived there a minute ago, I, argue, I argued. All the color drained from the man's face. Elderly woman? Yes, I said. You know, with her hair all tied up in a bun and whatnot? The last person who lived there was an elderly woman, always having her hair tied up in a bun. But she's dead. Huh. So, I didn't actually find out much of anything new about $1 WAV, but apparently it was created by a ghost. Interesting. But it's no laughing matter. I realized that the moment I saw that dang woman out of the corner of my eye, giving me that freaking soul-devouring stare and smiling like a maniac. When I focused on her, she disappeared. I then, I then proceeded to sprint out of the room and hide on, under a blanket for the rest of the night. When I dared go back into the living room, a dollar bill lay on the floor where the woman had been. Hmm. That's, that's actually quite interesting. I, I don't understand what the last paragraph there meant that w when I saw the woman, she disappeared. I, what, did, what, did it mean that he like saw her in the corner of his eye and then she disappeared when he got home or something? I don't know. On to post number three. On August 29th, Goodman updated the blog again with yet, yet another report about his research on the ominous $1.WAV. It's official, that old hag is stalking me. Since my last post, I've been catching glimpses of her out of the corner of my eye, always with that soul-devouring soul stare and demented smile. She always vanishes as soon as I focus on her, and it always has to be at night when it happens. Each time I get the heck out of there and hide under a blanket for the rest of the night. When I dare enter the room again, there's a dollar bill where the woman was. I've actually coll collected all the dollar bills she's left for me, beginning with the one that came with the last evidence disc, into one wa wallet. I've gone three days straight without sleep because of this crap. In the most recent incident, she was even holding a bloody knife. That was enough encouragement for me. I packed up a few things, and me and my dog piled into the car and went to my friend's house. Unrelated. I haven't told you my dog's name yet, have I? Her name's Coco, as in Chocolate Coco. Anyways, as I was saying, oh boy, I have a feeling that Coco is gonna die pretty soon. Because they introduced their, their name, the dog is totally gonna die. I told him everything that had happened. I would kept it secret because I figured if I told him he'd, he'd think I was insane. But at this point, I really had no other option. About one dollar that WAV, the old hag that seemed to want to kill me for some reason, etc. I expected him to say I was crazy and call a mental inst institution, but miraculously, he actually believed me. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. I guess he knew I would I wouldn't make crap like this up. 
so I'm going to be staying at, this, at his place until the situation blows by. This reminds me a lot of like Happy Happy or 1999, a whole lot like uh, the protagonist, the author comes across some, some weird thing, they uh, start doing research about it and then someone involved in the thing starts stalking them. In uh, Happy Happy, it, it was Forensic. In 1999, it was Mr. Bear. And in this one, it's the old hag, apparently. Uh, it's quite similar. I don't know if uh, any of those three stories that I could think of at the top of my head. Uh, I don't know which one was first. I don't know which one was last. I'm certain I'm certain 1999 wasn't the, wasn't the first one to do it. I'm certain. I'm actually going to look that up right now. If it says when it was written. Uh, because... Because I need to. I let's do this. Nineteen ninety nine creepypasta wiki. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. Does it say? Oh, it was written in. Ha! Huh. It was written in. Oh nine twenty one, eleven. So it was written. So the first update, was written. The first update of 1999 was written on the 21st of September, 2011. Okay, okay, okay. 2000, 2000. Huh. And the p first post of $1.WAV was posted on... The okay, it doesn't say, but the second was posted on August 26, 2011. So it was written around, I would say it was written around a month uh, before 1999. So I, it could be a coincidence, and it could be that either 1999 or this story ripped off another one, the, the other. Who knows, eh? Let's continue with uh, post number four. It's a quite short one, so let's go. Posted August 30th, 2011. Tonight my friend glanced out the window and all the color drained from his face and Coco growled menacingly at it. I looked out the window. The window is capitalized for some reason. I looked out the window and I saw it. That blasted old hag. She stared into the room from outside, from outside, with that soul-devouring soul stare and that same demented smile. Then, she disappeared. We didn't need any more encouragement. We pulled do down those blinds and nailed boards to every window in the house, as well as the front and back doors. I didn't think we'll be going out- I don't think we'll be going outside for a while. Huh, this is- this is interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Post number five. Posted August thirty first, two thousand eleven. I went on my comp my friend's laptop and checked the front forum thread I had posted about asking about one dollar dot wav. Someone had replied there under the username one dollar, and guess what their profile picture was? That cursed old hag's face with her trademark soul eating stare and demented grin. Okay, that's not very that's not a very terrifying description. Her trademark soul eating stare and demented grin. That's kind of like, you know, <laughs> that's kind of witty actually. And uh, you know, uh doesn't really make me like at the edge of my seat. It makes me kind of go back like, "Huh, trademark." That's kind of funny actually. So, I don't know. I I would give advice to for authors to just try to stay away from comedy. I mean, it's very very hard to get, you know, a black comedy right. It's very hard to, like, make people both laugh and feel scared at the same time. It's very difficult. So I would have to say that if you're planning on doing so, make sure you, like, really, really try. Because, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm tired. Uh, her reply said simply... Oh, more evidence. Guess I'll have to destroy it. I clicked the reply button to respond, but it said that the thread never existed. Furthermore, when I searched the username $1, it said no such user ever existed. 
Weirdest of all, her join date had been in 1928. That was nine freaking decades ago. The internet didn't even exist back then. That reminds me of the chat room 98, I think. Because, like, the person who was talking on the chat room, the murderer, was, like, from really long, really long time ago. This is sort of the same thing. Again, I don't know if this story ripped off Chatroom 98 or if Chatroom 98 ripped off this one or if it's simply a coincidence. I'm just I'm just stating it. I'm just stating that it's very similar. Uh, so not doing any conspiracy theories or anything at all. Post number 6. Posted September 1st, 2011. While on my friend's laptop, a dialog box suddenly appeared, prompting me to download $1.exe. Knowing this could only be more of the old hag's haunting, I cancelled the download, but guess what? It downloaded anyways. Ain't that just nifty? As soon as it finished downloading, it opened itself up. I prepared for the worst. Another computer destroying virus. The old hag contained within a computer file. It opened. It was... It was... A game. A game. Of all the wretched things $1.exe could have been, it was just some PC game. It showed a generic generic menu menu screen, with the buttons play, exit, and options. The background was a picture of a dollar bill. I clicked options, just some graphic settings and such. I went back and cl clicked play, again preparing myself for the worst. It gave an instruction screen on how to play. Basically, basically, the concept was that you were a bank robber, and in each level you had to go through obstacles to get to the bank and rob it. In each bank, you'd have to fight a boss, and if you beat the boss, you'd get the money. This, again, reminds me a lot of Happy Appy, because in Happy Appy, the author received a, uh, uh, like a computer game with, of Happy Appy, and now they're receiving a $1 uh, game. I'm actually gonna... Uh, go. I'm actually gonna go look up uh, Happy Happy the the show, see uh, or the uh, story uh, to see when it was released. Let's see here. Okay, February February twenty third, two thousand eleven was the first one. Uh, at least I think so. Uh, I mean, of course, the author could have simply just uh, wrote that they wrote it then, but they wrote it some other date, maybe. But that is interesting. This story was written in February February of 2011. $1.wav was written in August of 2011, if we're supposed to believe the authors. And 1999 started in, like, uh, somewhere around September of 2011, I presume. So they were all released... Uh, in the same year, and but but Happy Happy came first. This is very interesting. This is very interesting, huh? Anyways, let's continue. Uh, let's continue. So I played the game with my friend and Coco watching anxiously. Unrelated again. My friend's name is Bill. He is so dead. It was your generic platform game and I played through it quite easily. I beat three levels, and then the fourth one was the final one before I got to the first bank. I beat that level and fought the boss. The boss was some kind of banker with superpowers or something. It was a world one boss, so he was ridiculously easy to beat. I beat him by shooting him in the head with a pistol, and I got the money. The game counted, counted up my scores, and so forth, before taking me to the first level of world two. I would appreciate if the author would have gone in a little, a little bit more detail about how the uh, game looked. Because, like, I don't know what to imagine in my head. Is it a 2D style game? Is it a 3D style game? I don't know. Did, that's, did it say that in the... Uh, anywhere in the game? Go through obstacles to get the bank and rob it. Okay, so I guess it says that you have to go through obstacles. So that sort of makes it seem like it's a 2D game. But still... I don't know, because it never said so. I don't I don't know what to imagine in my head. 
I figured uh, because uh, let's see here. I because when I I read stories and I like read books and all of that, I love to you know ha- have every everything you know visually uh, there for me. I like to imagine how everything looks uh, looks in my head. Uh, I think it's that's one of the charms about reading reading books in general. Uh, you get a sort of uh, uh, image in your head of what you uh, of what every character looks like and how all the environments look like, and no two people are gonna see the same things, which I think is very interesting. Uh, so yeah, I figured I had played enough, so I tried to exit the window, but clicking the X only greeted me with a Windows error sound. If it wanted me to keep playing, and judging by all the weird crap that had happened to me recently, the reasons couldn't be good. So, I tried ending the application process with Task Manager, but the End Process button only gave me the error sound again. I tried shutting down, but the shutdown button gave me the same results. It was very similar to when $1.WAV had first destroyed my old computer. Because the laptop was running on a battery, I had to take out the battery to shut it off. I put the battery back in, rebooted, and everything was normal again. I deleted $1.exe. It didn't come back like $1.WAV said did. It stayed deleted. Let's see here. There are nine uh, posts. I am on post 7. Posted September 4th, 2011. More corner of my eye sightings of the old hag. In all of them, she's holding a bloody knife. Boarding up our windows and doors didn't seem to help. She still got into the house. Today, we unboarded the front door to go and get the Sunday paper. Even if, even if we're hiding from a sadistic ghost woman who wants to kill us, we still gotta keep up on the news, right? It's said that a bl- banker had been found dead at a- oh. What? Are you are you for real? No. Are you kidding me? Okay. Oh no. So they play the game, they play the video game and then the people they kill in the video game die in real life. Oh, this reminds me so much of the fucking G- GTA San Andreas story where the the main character killed Obama. <laughs> Oh, I'm... Oh, oh god, that's... Oh, no, story. You're kind of jumping the shark now. You can't kill people through video games. I mean, you were sort of jumping the shark with the woman, uh, like the dead woman, but at least that was like sort of, you know, creepy in a way. That was... It was kind of creepy, I will have to admit. But now you're, you're starting to kill people through video games? That's not creepy anymore. God, that's just weird. God damn it. It's said that a banker had been found dead at a local bank with a bullet wound in his forehead. It showed a picture of the man, and to our horror, he looked exactly like the World 1 boss from $1.exe. The way in which I had defeated him had even been a pistol to the head, and the paper said there was a bullet wound on his head. As I read the paper, I saw the old hag again out of the corner of my eye, of course, holding a dead corpse under her arm that looked just like the banker. This time, I didn't focus on her. I focused on the paper to see what would happen if I didn't make her disappear. If she tried to kill me or anything, I'd just look at her. She just kept standing there, with that demented smile and soul-eating stare. After a few moments, her smile began to fade and turn to a frown as if she was disappointed that I didn't seem to notice her. I looked at I looked to Bill, and surprisingly he had followed suit. Even Coco was pretending not to notice the hag. I turned back to the paper so I could continue seeing the hag out of the corner of my eye. It wasn't easy trying not to see something that yet see it at the same time. I kept wanting to look, but I knew if I focused on her she would disappear. I wanted to know what what would happen uh, what would happen if that didn't happen. Like, I suppose maybe she created that freaking game. Maybe she created the game and then she just killed people uh, who were similar to the game. Maybe we can justify it that way. But it was still kind of weird. Her disappointed expression then turned to a fierce and angry look. She raised her knife and lunged at me. In unison, me, Bill, and Coco all whirled around to face the ghost. 
She stopped abruptly just as she was about to reach us, then vanished. This raised yet another question. If she wants to kill us so badly, why didn't she just do it and get it over with, instead of taunting us like this? Maybe she doesn't want to kill us. Maybe she just wants to make us think she wants to kill us, make us paranoid to the point of insanity, just for her own sadistic pleasure and amusement. Sure wouldn't surprise me. Post 8. Posted September 5th, 2011. I woke up this morning from the little sleep that I actually got. I opened my eyes, expecting to see the ceiling above me. But then, I froze. Standing above me, looking down into my eyes, with her soul-devouring stare, there's another- you can use other words to describe her stare. Because all, all the, he's always the author is always describing it as soul devouring stare. It's getting kind of old. You you could have you could have varied it up a bit. And sorry if I'm coming across as harsh or you know uh, or rude. Uh, it's not against the author in the slightest. It's against the story. Uh, I'm not not criticizing the author as a person or anything like that. I'm criticizing the story. Uh, always remember that in all of these videos, it's all I'm always criticizing the. Uh, story unless i uh, uh you know explicitly state that you know the author might have done something stupid like of like uh jc the hyena could have done something stupid i i will of course uh, s say stuff like that and i will call them out on that if they do stupid stuff but if uh but i not but i will make that very clear so if i don't always remember authors that i am not attacking you i am attacking the stories for several moments there was silence. I said nothing for I was too afraid. I didn't move. I didn't even breathe. My heart threatened to burst it to burst. It was pounding so hard. Then finally the hag broke the silence. Good morning, John, she said menacingly. It took all of my courage to respond. Just tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. Just leave me alone, I replied. It's just so sad when you have to live under a curse. The curse of my own creation. Forced to pass on the curse to others. The curse of one dollar. Of greed. I never asked for this. But after having it shoved down my throat so much, I've come to enjoy it. Oh god, if I, if I, oh god, if I make that something dirty, that's, that's so bad, that's so bad. <laughs> okay, th think of it, think of it as a dirty thing now. I never asked for this, but after having it shoved down my throat so much, I've come to enjoy it. <laughs> I am so sorry. Let's continue. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's my sanity that has, that's been pushed by this or what. But it comforts me to know others are feeling the same pain as me. Enough of your cryptic crap! I yelled. Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna give give her attitude when she's like in the middle, uh, like standing over you, huh? You're gonna give her attitude, huh? Uh, and then suddenly Coco jumped out of nowhere and tackled the hag to the ground, growling furiously. The hag just smiled. Go ahead, do it. Rip me to bloody shreds. Strike me down and I will become more powerful. No, wait, that was, that was Obi-Wan. I, I was supposed to uh, quote the Emperor, but then I just quoted Obi-Wan instead. Whatever. It might just be the only hope of destroying this horrid curse once and for all. Your suffering will be gone, and everyone who's ever fallen victim to greed's villainy. Before another word could be said, Coco began tearing that woman to bloody shreds. I never knew my dog could be so violent, but I didn't care. If it meant the end of this terror that loomed over us, it was worth it. Me and Bill, who had woken up by all of the commotion, could only watch as the hag was torn apart. She didn't even scream. In fact, she smiled, as if saying, Thank God it's finally over. And then, it was done. Her body was mangled and ripped so badly you couldn't recognize her. Blood was splattered everywhere. Then the body, or the pieces of it anyway, began to shimmer and fade away, and then they were gone. No trace of them remained, <clears throat> as if nothing had happened. Then we noticed a note laying on the floor where the hag had been. Bill picked it up and read it, al and read it aloud. 
Destroy the dollars. Destroy the disc. Do it before the remnants of the curse that lie within them enslave you as it enslaved me. I instantly knew what I had to do. I found the wallet I used to keep all the dollars the hag had left me, and I lit a match to it. A blood-curdling scream of pain sounded from it and almost made me, made me jump out of my skin. I threw it outside, and it burned until it was nothing but ash and dust. When I con found the disc containing $1.WAV, I threw it on the ground and stomped on it. Another blood-curdling scream, and the disc spontaneously burst into flames. Now that is what I call burning a CD-ROM. Oh, we got Arnold Schwarzenegger in the house. We got fucking Sylvester Stallone in the house. One-liners, dropping one-liners all the way. Ooh. Uh, that, I'm sorry, but that totally, totally ruins the mood. And ruins the atmosphere, like, now that is what I call burning a CD-ROM. Ooh, that's, that, oh, that's kind of just like, that's weird. If you want to make a scary story, you know, I, I don't know, That's that, that was so weird. I mean, it was a, it was a good one-liner, but it, didn't, it doesn't make me scared. This story doesn't scare me because of that. It burned until it was nothing but a bunch of melted plastic. I had to use a shovel to scrape it off the ground and shuck it outside. For the rest of the day, nothing else happened. The hag never came back. Nothing. I think, at long last, this nightmare might be over. But I won't make assumptions too quickly. I'll wait a while, see if anything else comes up. If anything else does, I guess it's safe to assume the haunting of one dollar that WAV has ended. Wait a minute. So you destroyed the uh, wallet and you destroyed the CD uh, containing the WAV file, but did you destroy the uh, the disc containing the game? Uh, so let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, knowing this could be a uh, dialog box. Yeah, did they, did they, did they delete $1.exe? I, I don't know, let's, that's it. Post 9, the last post of the story, uh, which is the first part of the Goodman Saga. I will, I, I think I will read the next installments. Uh, yeah, I will, I will. Well... And not in this episode, but in the future. I promise I will. I'll, I'll do that. Post 9. Posted November 12th, 2011. Well, I think I've waited long enough without anything happening that I can find that I can safely assume this is all over. Me and Coco have moved back into our own house. Things seem to be returning to normal. And after some thinking, I've come up with a hypothesis as to what all that crap was about. Don't call it crap, that makes it seem like it didn't, wasn't a big deal at all. You should be scared, goddamn. You should be scared, author. You shouldn't go like, oh, what, what is that crap? <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, maybe it's supposed to be like, oh, the author is sarcastic, and maybe the that's what the author was going for, and if so, that's kind of cool, I guess, but, I mean... I personally don't prefer it. I think it, it sort of ruins the atmosphere in the story. But that's just me. I think the hag was forced by a curse to do terrible things. The curse was like a virus, using her to spread to others. I guess one dollar that WAV and all associated things are all duplicates of this virus. I can only assume its proper name is greed, since that's what the hag kept referring to it as. How greed came to be, or what its purpose was, I can only wonder, but the hag seemed to hint that it was she who created it, and it was a screw-up that she made that caused all this. I guess those dollars, the disc and the hag, were the last remnants of greed, and by destroying them, uh, I destroyed greed forever. She was so anxious to get her hands on evidence and destroy it, because she wanted to destroy the curse of greed. I don't know whether any of these guesses are even remotely correct, but I don't really care. As long as this nightmare is over, I'm content with not knowing. 
and I'm pretty damn certain that it's finally over. And the story ends with, you think so, huh? Well, that was $1.WAV. I will have to say, I did kind of like it. I, I did kind of like it. It was it was all right. I mean, it wasn't anything super amazing, and it was sort of cliched at times. And some of the stuff I didn't really think made sense. And like, what was the point of the? Uh... Let me just stretch. <sighs> what was the point of the game? And like the woman murdering that that banker or that robber or whatever, whatever she was killing. What was the point of that really? Like she just held the body and that was it i was that there to like show like oh she kills people or something i don't know and what was like uh what was the point of her creating her account in 1928 and uh like if she's from 1928 how would she have been able to uh create a computer disc and if the old and how did the man know that the woman used to live there if she uh, came from 1928? I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it just said 1928 just cause, or maybe there was some reason that gets explained in the next installments. Uh, we'll have to see. But it was a little weird. I I don't know how I, what I would uh, rate it right now. What what rating I would give it? Probably like a six. Or a 7 out of 10. I think like a 6 out of 10. Which isn't bad in any means. It means that it is above average. Like 5 out of 10. That's average in my opinion. Uh, 6 out of 10. It's a little bit above average. I mean it did have some creative ideas. And some cool parts. But that was about it. Uh, let's take a look at some of the comments. Wow. Whoa dude says one comment. Not that scary but meaningful 7 out of 10. Yeah I would say, say that. It was it was pretty good. I, wait, meaningful? I don't know what what do you, what you mean by meaningful. How is the story meaningful? I don't know. Oh my god, I finally found a very tense, very scary. I finally found a very tense, a very scary, and has very good storytelling. 47 out of 47. That's a weird comment. Uh, for what it is, I like this one. 8 out of 10. Alright, man. Uh, please don't crucify me or fill me in with cursing, but from post 3 onwards, I started to take this as a, as a well-written troll pasta. That's fair enough. It was alright, but so many cliches. 7 out of 10. Yeah, I will agree. It was very... It was cliched a lot of times. But I mean, if it was one of the first stories again, uh, I guess it's excused. One of the best pastas ever made. Too bad it's under underrated. Well made, I'll have to respectfully disagree. Uh, yeah, it seems it seems like a lot of people, uh, a lot of people seem to sort of enjoy it. Yeah, and I sort of enjoy it as well. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, did have a pretty <clears throat> interesting story to tell, and it had some interesting ideas, and that's about it. Thank you for joining me for this very long episode, so this episode of Blind Creepypasta Readings. I can't believe you listened to the end. That's incredible. Thanks a lot. That's insane. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for doing whatever you're doing. Uh, this has been Huda Hoodlum with Blind Creepypasta Readings, signing the hell out. No, I'm kidding. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay awesome. Good bye.